This week, I wanted to focus on just the power of good shapes, good colors, um, with a nearly abstract subject. And that lets us focus a little bit more on the composition and a little bit less on the drawing of this thing or the drawing of that thing. So obviously a, a river scene on the Mississippi, some channel islands. When I look at something, even if I was doing this subject midday when you could see the trees and all the other stuff in detail, um, I would be making these same kind of judgments that I'm going to speak about uh, as we're going along. So a similar kind of image, uh, this is by Edward Sego, a British painter. Um, if you look closely at this, those boats and the land and the distant bank are basically just shapes and nearly all one color. Um, uh, maybe actually are one color, just m minor variations in value. But you see rigging, you see those nets that you crawl up to get to the top of the mast. There's a tent type thing on the back boom of the boat that you can see pulleys and stuff like that. But a lot of it is just little dits and dots and, and just the shape. He's, what he's concentrated on is the size, the general shape, the position, and the value, the important things. And I, I made a little note. Uh, just just the, the idea of detail uh, versus emotion. So a photo has all the details, has all the particulars. And if it's a good photo, it suggests some emotion. A painting should have the emotion, and if it's a good painting, it should suggest the detail. It shouldn't bog us down with the, uh, uh, the particulars. Um, it should suggest them. So. When I go to draw this, whether it's in whatever medium, um, what I set out to do is not snake around these little shapes, like an ant crawling around that contour. If you do, you're going to wind up with something that looks like a bunch of blue Twinkies floating upriver. So the thing that I, and this is what I want everyone to do when you, when you try this project. I want you to not, because I see people doing it all the time, they'll find, they'll see this little place and they'll start around here. And then they'll see this little place and they'll start around here. And then, you, um, and you lose your uh, proportion and you lose your scale and all these things. So what we want to do is always treat it in relation. I'll look for relationships. The first thing I'm looking for is basically the horizon, the division. It's about the third mark. So I'm going to just run a line across there like that. And this is an opaque medium, so we can work right over it. Don't use a light color to draw with. Use a, a dark color because in pastel or in oils too, the light colors cover the dark color colors better than the reverse. So the other thing I want to find is where is, that's this initial bifurcation, where's this one? Because that's kind of an important one. That I see it's a little bit past a quarter but not quite to a third. So it's at that space like that. I'm going to draw a line and you've got a, we got a bullseye there. Now I want to start looking for this business. But before I start drawing stair steps in there, we will tend to draw those evenly. You know, I don't know why that is. We just will tend to do that. So the bigger thing to do is find that diagonal that they all sit on. So it starts at, what's that, about a quarter maybe? Yeah, roughly a quarter mark. And you, the, the beautiful thing about this is you don't have to be, it doesn't have to be to aerospace tolerances. <laughs> if you're in, 
and it doesn't quite, it almost, yeah, it almost came a quarter up to there. Now we've got like a sideways A or something like that. Um, this, what is the general thickness of that? About maybe like so. Now, I want to find where are these? That distance versus this distance. A third of this. So that would mean one, two, three, four. So a quarter of that distance there. Let's half it. And let's half that. So this one. There I've got this one, I've got this one. Um, now the other thing is we are looking at uh, the reflection of the Channel Island in the water and the, the trees. So we're gonna draw the whole enchilada and do some key separations late in the, in, in the proceedings. So this, within this space, so let's we'll ignore this one. Within there, that is about a little more than a third of that distance. So it's going to be about like that. And this comes in. Now, here and here and here. Notice that it's wide, narrow, narrower, and, oh, I didn't mention, when I drew this, there is a bluff over there in Illinois, which I ignored. So that's going to go in now. And it pitches downhill, and it pitches downhill to about past here, somewhere out there. So now it's easier to find that. I'm for certain would have over or underdrawn that if I hadn't have done this first. Now this can get kind of rounded. We can play with the particulars now. And this comes to a little bit past where we found that point. So this one cuts over to here. Then goes up. Now see, we're going to be much more accurate than if we had monkeyed around and tried to draw these things on their own. So let's deepen up. And also, if you get the general proportions of these things, uh, which involves their position, then we can put in this kind of ups and downs. There's these lovely little breaks in there, which we would tend to if we were drawing them to equally space them. I don't know if it's because our heart beats at a, at a regular rhythm or uh, we just crave regularity. Uh, it's, it's just something you have to kind of work against. That little break in there, that's something that'll go in at the end because it's a light. So there's all kinds of little fun things like that. So here's our drawing. Find that one, find this one, find that. So it's cross, diagonal, and then start finding the intervals, the other intervals in there. And this will save you tons of time because if you're trying to draw that contour and you find out, oh, I'm too far over on this one or I'm too far back on that one, you're erasing and the light is changing and this time of day, it's just minutes. So um, this is enough drawing to get going. So now I want to think about what's happening color-wise. Um, it's kind of a two-color picture. Blue-greens and yellow-oranges. So there you've got <coughs> some polarity to work with. Um, 
But just like we've been talking about with some of the other images before, we want to look at what is the big relationship between those three important planes. The plane of the sky, the plane of the ground, or in this case, the water, and then that vertical plane, which here is just those trees. Uh, in this instance, the dark, medium, light relationship is sky is the lightest, some of it reflects in the water, but sky is the lightest, ground is somewhat medium, and the vertical plane of the trees and stuff is the darkest, although it does lighten up a bit as it goes back. There's rarely like a perfect, I mean, maybe on a golf course, a very large golf course with a tree, <laughs> then you would get the uh, uh, perfect situation. So, I'm going to just mark light, medium, dark. Now, also with the color, you've got some progression within the general areas. The yellow-orange in the sky goes from an orangier yellow-orange on this side to a yellower yellow-orange on that side. And even if that wasn't happening, that's something I'd want to do anyway, um, just to keep from having a big band of the same stuff. Uh, here we're going from a grayer coral orangey color to a more coral orangey color to a pale grayish blue green. Uh, so there's progression, there's horizontal progression, vertical progression. There's even some vertical progression here as we go up. There's some pale, pale bluish green for some clouds. Now what really doesn't show well on this uh, printout uh, is there's some lovely little cloudy thing coming out from a, uh, I don't know, an ethanol plant or <laughs> <laughs> something out there. Um, who knows, but it's really interesting. And that's the kind of thing that we're, when we get later on, we're going to use uh, innocuous little things like that to suggest uh, detail. But on the land here, you've got this dark Prussian-y blue going to a greener, not as dark blue-green, to a gray, pale blue-green, to a really, really pale <laughs> blue-green. So pastel tends to migrate down. I'm going to start with the sky. I'm going to get a light yellow-orange. And if I have to... This is the uh, Canson Touch, my tense touch. It's a sanded surface. Now, I'm going to really overstate here because uh, the other thing with pastel is that um, you never have the right color. There's just, so we all know that. Um, so the first thing you do is you try to get the value right. And then you try to get the vividness or the chroma of it right. And it's easier to make a bright, vivid color dull than it is to make a dull color vivid. Okay, so, so I always err to the more vivid color and adjust it if necessary. So that's a bit of an overstatement, but I'm going to live with that for the time being. I want a more pinkish coral color, which is a little bit darker than that. Again, overstating, because um, I don't have that exact one. Um, maybe I do, let's see. Nope, good. So we don't want it. It's lighter to the back, grayer to the back, and more vivid to the front. And then this is where it starts turning blue-green on us. So this is where I'm going to begin switching 
to those colors. And again, this is a, a significant overstatement. This is far more vivid than what I am seeing in the reference, but I'm going to take it down later. I've got a kind of a grayish blue-green. If you don't have one, that's all right. I'll show you how to make that. Let's say your blue-green is more like that than this. So here we go, that. And we find a neutral gray um, of the exact same value, if possible. And we walk it down. And to whatever degree of blue-greenness we need. Um, I'm going to go to, it gets a bit more vivid here in the foreground, but heck, maybe not that vivid, right? So, getting like, and the, you notice I'm trying to get as much chalk on everywhere, or as much color on everywhere before I start fiddling with any little details. Don't, oh good, good, you drew some, yeah. I'm glad to see you doing that. So, so Kathleen's doing the right thing. She found these, and then she started doing all that. So here that's just, whoa, that's just a bit too much. So I'm going to find the gray that's about equal in value to that, and I'm going to start walking it down. Vivid color first, neutral color second. Let's live with that for a moment. Now, put a bit more of that in there. A bit more of that in there. This. I can see right now I'm going to be wanting adjusting this a little lighter, but that's okay. No. Yes. I'm going to leave it there, because it may look lighter when I get some dark colors on here. So I'll get something everywhere, and then in these big shapes, big important shapes, and then I'll make my micro adjustments. I don't want to get in here and start doing, oh, here's the little bit in there. So you don't want to find out you need that color down here or something later. Purplish blue-green. My darkest, deepest blue-green is probably, I need something kind of Prussian blue if we're doing well. Now this is real dark. So I might go a shade lighter. Nope, that's not a greenish blue. So I'll live with this and I'll put some green in it. Too dark. And I'll progress to these. That's too light. So we'll go to, we'll just go with what we have and modify it. So and just never have the exact color in a pastel, but with the oils, if you were using oils, you could, you know, mix this up pretty easy. So here it gets a little lighter as we go in this direction. Ignoring that little light spot of the river in there, I'm going to plow just a bit of this into that. You can see we're getting a little closer to what we want there. So between those two,
And if you're trying to adjust value, just as we put the vivid color down first and the dull color second and walk it down, if you need to get a color between two, you know, put your darker color down first because the lights cover the darks better and then walk it down that way. So we're going further down the river. I'm starting to need a lighter. Now that, of course, is too vivid again. And it's a little too dark. So I'm going to gray it and lighten it a bit. And I, boy, I thought I had a blue green that was about like that. Nope, too green. Too light. It's like Goldilocks when you do this. So what if we haven't got it? Well, I get the lightest blue-green. Well, the closest one I have. And you can see this is like basically turquoise. That's just nothing near what I want. So I'm going to have to get into this turquoise with a gray. So gray of near equal value. That's too dark. Too dark. So how about a, we'll eventually find it. can tell that's too light straight away. What if I don't have it? Okay, how about something in the family that's not yellowish or reddish, something bluish or purplish, something that's as close on the color wheel as I can get, but is closer to the right value. So that's too dark. Let's go down to I've got a purple that's about right. And I've got a green, I think, that's about right, value wise. So the net effect, I hope, between the green and the purple, because they're starting to be near complementary is that they'll start to neutralize each other a bit and give me something that's a little closer to what I'm looking for. It's atmosphere and light, a lot of water, anything can happen. It will look plausible if you have the right value in the right place in the right proportion. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, yeah, I think I still do want to just say I've got some color everywhere now. Um, I can look at this and I'm say, okay, that needs to go a little lighter and then gradate upwards as well. This needs to be a little lighter too. So let's get a too dark, light, circus peanut color, and a bit of that up in here too. The next lighter tone maybe also yellowish. In there, bring a bit of that across, a bit of this this way, a bit of this that way. 
This is complete abstraction. I'm just doing the same thing that Jackson Pollock does, is I'm throwing one color at it, I'm throwing another color at it, and I'm just looking for some colors that play nicely together. It's a little redder at the horizon. It's a little redder further east. Um, could use a bit more in there. It's like a dimple in the paper there. Okay, so let's start getting into our really pale yellows. I have to look at these because they're kind of dirty in the in the box. Okay, here we go. Now we're starting to get something closer to what I was looking for. No blending yet. Um, I want to save that for the end. Because uh, once I've blended it, I'm pretty much, that's all she wrote for that texture. Now, a little of that gray is going to show up up here in the top portions of the sky, top left, just to that. A little of that, this is our most, most, most distant area back there. Um, now, I know that this is going to be the smoothest area, so I can start to do a little bit of blending. And I can say, okay, that is a little bit over the top. So here, here goes the, uh, the gray, the peachy, this is probably more like a flesh color. Um, that's a good question because, the so the question is, is how many layers can I get on this? Um, usually two or three, I mean, you can see it kind of cake and not fall, it, you know, it falls away and the previous color still shows or something. Uh, then you know, I mean, you're a little far gone. So if you get past it where you should be, use a stiffer bristle brush to take a little bit of the color out. Um, and you'll usually recover enough tooth to get what you need on there. So I'm going to throw just a little bit of lighter turquoisey blue in here. So I'm getting closer to the uh, value structure that the uh, reference has. I think I need to get a little lighter in there to separate that area from this area. Um, so we'll try feathering on a bit of this stuff. Yeah, that looks a little better. And again, this won't be a one-to-one -one color matching thing. You just can't do that with pastel. You can try it, but it just doesn't. It's not like going down to the paint store and getting that chip. That's exactly what you're looking for. Okay, so we need to go a little bit paler in our peachy coral colors down here. I may even have to get into some pink. Again, you know, that's lighter still. Um, you want the value 
and then the vividness or the chroma and as close as you can get to the desired color on the color wheel as you can. As long as you're in the for example if you needed a very particular red but you don't have it if you can get something in the red violet or the red orange end of the spectrum that is the right value and the right vividness you'll be all right um, there's some those lines on the horizontal are really making it pop out a little orangier there So you can see why I don't want to get, you know, I might have gone up here and thought, you know, if I hadn't done anything down here, and I'm up here fussing around with the other colors, that I, and I think I've got the right color, and then I get down here and find, oh, heck no, that's not it. Now, when I'm plowing this in for maximum, uh, brightness, I can still see, wow, I sure need to get a different color range up there or here. Needs to be, and I just haven't got exactly the thing, so I'm going to have to live with this because it's, it's a dream sickle circus peanut orange kind of color. And then, da, 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 where'd that come from? Some of this gray green. Now there's little lines throughout that we don't put in till like now. That is an important line, that thing there, and maybe the one coming out of here. Because they're establishing that plane and they're creating different intervals. In a sense of distance, right? It's yeah, it's, um, we don't want them to be equally spaced and we don't want them to be equal width because that would create some problems. So now I'm going to try and separate this set of channel islands from that set of channel islands. So I'm getting the blue-green. Maybe a little lighter down to about there. Which means a little ooh, even lighter still back here. I may have to go to a real lighter than that. Real, real pink or something. Now pink, that's ah, too dark. That's just, ah, there we go. That's the distant color I was looking for. So I'm also getting a lot of chromatic action of putting a red, very pale red violet, which is what pink is, against a dull blue green. And they're becoming somewhat neutralized, but kind of activated nicely. So let's get some of that in here. Boy, I, I like that color. This is really the kind of thing that um, Monet was doing with some of his uh, Bail pictures and some of the like Ruin Cathedral pictures. Um, it's just color against color with big interesting shapes. Particularly those cathedral ones because my goodness, 
I mean, you think you see in a cathedral, and then you look, it's actually there, and it's just the, the shaggiest collection of brush strokes you can possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting a little bit of this down in there. I might get adventurous and put a kind of a navy blue in here. I'm not really seeing that in the reference, but the value is right and the chroma is right. So if I can't get the right blue-green, I'll get a blue and some blue-green and see if I can't create the appearance of that thing. Feathering the two, two colors one against the other. Not worrying about where the water line is yet because that's going to be an accent. So I'm plowing a little more chalk on. And getting the shapes a bit more specific. I could even smuggle in some cobalt blue there because I felt like I'll have to hold up the I felt like there's a lot of, that's very vivid um, and kind of clear because, and I don't have the exact blue-green, so I'll get the value and vividness of a regular blue and I'll try to smuggle in, that's too light, smuggle in some blue-green to just get me as close as I can. Pull right across my edges sometimes. Because we want to keep all of our edges lost until the end. Are you going to leave the darker um, top on that last channel? Here? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to try and get something. There is a little bit of separation between here and there. I had a friend take me out on a boat here one time. It's a really cool place. Um, so let's go with the one behind being slightly lighter. Again, this is a more of a, a blue, cerulean kind of blue. Uh, smuggle a little bit of that into here too. The thing that's gonna make this place live is when that little area that's down there and you can actually see the water pops out. And then we put the steamy ethanol plant thing in there. So a little bit of blending. Now notice I'm, when I'm getting closer to us with the trees, I'm blending vertically the way the object goes. So that, and if you were using oil paint, and also your reflections, see we're almost getting those. I'm going to try to find those. This is, I know, going to be pretty smooth, so I can. Uh, work into that. Over here. Um, I want, when I want a distinct but soft line, I blend along it. When I want a very indistinct thing, I blend across it. Going to leave a little bit of roughness down here at the bottom. back here pretty smooth. 
Uh, now here, I do need to add a little bit of color for the reflection. Just gonna pull it right down into the water. Big, big, big abstract shapes. And yet, we've got something at this point, even now, that looks natural and outdoorsy, we hope. So like there, I was blending across the thing because I want a very indistinct transition of color. Here where I want the, this brighter yellow to be a little more distinct, I'll blend along it. Okay. Um, peachy, peachy, peachy. Strong peachy color. Okay. Now there's, this is where we're going to start looking for some detail. There's a tiny little bit of some flotsam and jetsam or tree floating down the river there that is very, I think, kind of key. So I'm going to bring it out. And that little dark bit next to this little light bit where we can see the river. Uh, let's go lighter still. Maybe this color. This is what's going to make that thing Now there's one a little further down the way, back over here. On the way to the Quad Cities. How about some of this coral color? down like that. I want a bit lighter. And, you know, it makes sense that it would be a bit lighter over the lighter spot, a bit darker over the darker spot. Um, I'm going to trim that line I think I could go a little bit lighter right behind this yeah right, let's see if we can make our ethanol plant happen. Is that the flower? It's like a steam thing and there's some coming up from over here. Who knows what it is, but it's a nice irregular kind of little accenty. Do you worry at all about the shadow below? Do you just let it bleed into the shoreline? Here? Yeah, yeah I'm totally wanna, I totally want to lose that. Because if you look at this reference, uh, or the original photo, or even when I was there, 
you just didn't, you know, if you weren't looking right to the water line mm -hmm. and your eye adjusted for the distance and, and the illumination and then saw the water line, okay. this is what you would see when you're just taking in the whole scene. <coughs> so this should be very soft. Very soft. Then on just one or two key places, I'm going to find that little bit. And it's going to impute some uh, uh, water line to the whole area. Clean that shape up. Maybe a little in here. Where was that? I think it was this color I was using. Nope. This color. Yeah. Clean that shit. Just to, not along the whole thing. There's power in having it someplace, but not every place. Mm -hmm. um, because then the, the thing is happening in the viewer's mind rather than you spelling out the whole shooting match. And let's start looking for places. Ah, now I have some small pieces. Okay. Which, I do need a small piece for that. So, we can always pulverize them and put a little water with them and reconstitute them, so. Uh, Yeah, I mean, it's a per it's the perfect gray too. Yeah. It always it's works. The color of your shirt. Yep. So let's. We're gonna find the place to find where that water line is. Is where the contrast is highest, and that's where we break off from the tree line itself onto the lighter surface of the water. We don't want to outline that water line all the way down because that's what you see at midday. So we're going to get a deep blue that's lighter than this and we're going to find it at a key spot. Maybe right there. I'm going to put that little blue next to that coral because they play nicely together. And I might put a little thing there. And a little cut in there. And maybe just further down, I'll get that. Those little things that cut up and into. It looks like it goes two wide space, three real wide space, two. So, I mean, this is one instance where I can probably go ahead and copy actually what's there. Two, wide space, three. And let's make them even, not even the same widths. And then I've got a pair down there already. Line over there. And oh. Nope, see, you stick that on there. I'd rather not have it. I'm just going to darken what would be the face of the tree line there. Uh, and this introduced, this is a dark ballpoint pen purple kind of color. Uh, yeah, this is the that little tr dead tree, or who who knows what. I'm 
going to throw in some extra reflections. If it's darker there, then it needs to be darker here, too. So. And let's put... Um, uh, yeah, and you want to look at the, the subject to see which direction <laughs> it's going. Um, but it's, with light, anything can happen. Light and water, it's, all bets are off. I mean, this most unusual effects, you just never know. Now, down here at the bottom, I might throw in a couple. Oh, geez. Are, we, are you still there, Diane? Can you see me? I'm still here. I am still here. It was me. Oh, OK. I thought you know, it might be the FedEx again <laughs> trying to deliver something. Um, now. I don't want to willy-nilly put these little things in. And we're down to the last marks here. These are the very, very last marks. Um, I want to look for something that I can create some structure. Uh, I've got a diagonal going this way. Let's have. A di this is slightly diagonal. Let's have a diagonal coming up like this. So there's our snaking through the. So I'm just going to darken that a bit. like that, yeah, okay. And sometimes, rather than a bunch of little marks, a shift of color will do the, just about the same job. Especially down at the bottom edge. It's dangerous to start putting in a lot of little marks down at the bottom edge of the picture or out to the right or the left, same thing. Um, I'm just feathering a little bit of that gray-green over top so that my And that's about all she wrote, except I'm just going to check around here and make sure I've got what I want. Clean up my edges. And let's, okay, let's take a look at uh, what has transpired when we pull the tape off. That might inform us of something we want to change. So I'll put a clip on it. I can see something already, but. It's not a huge thing. Um, I think I could live with it right now as is. The very, very important thing, getting some color in everywhere in the big areas, the three most important planes, sky, Earth's surface, whether it's water or land, and then the stuff coming out of the surface. So I think I want to put a little bit extra lightness
up in here. And perhaps just a little bit of lightness there. Just give that a light blend. Okay, I think that's it. So, yeah. So, key thing, first bifurcation of your surface, where's that horizon line? There might be something a little above it, but you want to find that. Then find this very important separation there. Then find that diagonal. Then start separating these areas. And your drawing is going to be pretty much done at that point. Then you want to think about color areas. Sky the lightest, this one, the water or land medium. Trees coming vertically out, darkest. Some gradation as it goes away, but by and large, light, medium, dark. And you'll notice that the, me the so-called medium is closer to the light than it is to the dark. It's not like a, uh, a 50, you see rarely ever a 50-50 mix. It's usually uh, uh, dark accents on uh, overall light to medium background or light accents on overall dark and dark medium background. So also, if you, there's some color shirts you don't have, feel free to dip into this box and you know, get one that is in the ballpark. So now, question, uh, Diane, do you have questions? I, it's, I know there's some the drawing things you've probably heard me talk about before um, and the, the relational things. But I really want to get people to think in terms of, rather than stuff and this color here and that color there, relationally. Those colors versus these colors versus those colors. Um, this position versus that position versus... Uh, rather than looking at things by themselves, isolated colors, isolated shapes, see everything that's in that rectangle or square or whatever you're painting and uh, together so you can see those bigger relationships. So I'm gonna soften that even. And I'm gonna soften some of the edges so that the, the here, where it is distinct, it has more distinctness. Put your colors in, your best guess choices, but try to get the value first, the degree of vividness second, and where it is on the color wheel last. That's the place where you have the most fudge room. Um, has to be the right value or pretty close to it. Um, that's the thing that carries it. Um, a little bit. That's, I love that color. Okay, so if there aren't any other questions, then I'll have you guys jump in and start doing it yourselves. So, any other questions then, Diane? No, it looks really cool. I can hardly wait to try it. So, so it's a gorgeous place. Um, uh, it's uh, near Dubuque. Um, uh, yeah, looking south on the Mississippi, but in late November because of the way the river's bending, it, it appears to be, the sun appears to be coming up in the south. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in front of the, in front of Illinois. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it, rather than over, over here where you'd think it would be. So, oh my goodness, yeah, you look like you're in real good shape for 
the sky colors. That's a gorgeous, I love that circus painted orange. And you might be a little bit. That one may be fruit. Yeah, you might be a little bit light in the uh, dark departments. But uh, like I say, <laughs> sometimes it helps to just kind of pull them out and set them together. Okay, these are my darks. That's as dark as I can go. These are my lights. set as light as I can go. Um, that's going to be important for graying down colors if you need. The grays tend to be up in here. Some of them are a little pale blue-gray, and some of these are kind of reddish grays. This is a wonderful neutral medium gray, it, except that it's got some. You know. <laughs> it's, the other thing you'll notice, I tend to organize my colors so that the greens are near the greens, the blues are near the blues, the uh, and so on, so that I can tell a difference. Because sometimes like a green that's, ye it'll look yellow green near some blue. But you get it near a yellow and it looks different. Mm -hmm. So um, it's easier to see those differences if they're organized into groups. And then that also, as you begin to handle them and they all start to look like the same color, <laughs> you've got a pretty good idea where to reach. So. so the yellow <laughs> you nice used to the sky, what would you call it? The light yellow? Or? Oh, it's kind of a, actually almost like a pale ochre color rather than like a. Okay, a like this one. More. Probably, you might even get in there. But for, yeah, I had something like that. Um, but okay. you yeah, might even start with like something like that. You know, okay. this might wind up being in that mix. Okay. Um, basically, I said to myself, it goes from a yellow on the right to an orangier, peachier kind of color on yeah. the left. Yeah. So find that big horizontal line first that key vertical second, the diagonal line of the, and that should create a A laying on its side. Once you've got that big position, it's makes finding those particulars of the ins and outs and the shapes and things like that so much easier and faster. Yeah. And saves you a ton of money on erasers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now don't get too many separations in here. Yeah, you might want to get some of that color in here okay. so that there's some everywhere and you can make a judgment. Okay. So she doesn't make you tear, get a piece and tear the paper off? Yeah, she wants to break it and just use the end, but you know, try to keep the end as long as you can with the number and the name yep. so that you can identify. Yeah. Okay. Good, good, good. Oh, much, much better, much, much better. Oh, notice also that this one sort of cuts up and over. So we get a foreground, background effect. So that way? It, yeah, like so it kind of cuts up. If these trees are, we're making the assumption that they're all pretty much about the same height, then this, should be wider than this because this is, right yeah, eighth of a mile away or something. So keep the line you have here. Just bring it up a little higher. Like that? Yeah. Same line you had, um, just a little higher, yeah. Yeah, there you go.
already, I mean, it just looks like proportionately they look very similar now. Mm. So that really speeds up the drawing practice when you can uh, get the size and the position, the, first the position and then second the size of the thing and then become particular about the shape. It's like I probably, I'm sure I've mentioned the thing about the nose, but I don't think uh, Terry's heard it. That the, um, the hierarchy of getting something, get the position, where it is first, the position, then the size of it, then the shape of it, then the color of it. And the, the analogy I make is that if I was to do your portrait and show it to people who don't know you, um, I could get the color of your nose wrong, how are they going to know? I can get the sh shape of your nose wrong, how are they going to know? I can get the size of it wrong, they're none the wiser. But if I put a nose where a nose doesn't belong, immediately they'll know. I haven't. <laughs> That's so. why I like to draw trees. <laughs> <laughs> so. No one will ever tell you you have a leaf in the wrong place. Yeah, yeah, and that, well, really, um, if you get, if, you're doing a, a place that is relatively familiar to people. Yeah. Um, you know, something like the Eiffel Tower, you got to get those proportions and, and shapes right. Yeah. But a thing like this that, I mean, people have seen probably Mississippi Channel Island is all up and down the, the river. Uh, if you just get the basic size, position, you can play with the particulars of the shape so that they are interesting for the purposes of your picture, you know, as opposed to having to, you know, Explain. yeah, slavishly copy what's there. <laughs> so, is this dark enough? Or? Well, yeah. Once you get once you get some color in there and there, and then you can look at all three areas, mm -hmm. one against the other, and then you make some adjustments. Okay. Um, and I purposefully chose something that was highly silhouetted like this because had I got something that was later in the day when you could see trees and boats and who knows what, it's, it's too tempting to start drawing all that stuff. You may have to, yeah, you may find you want to go straight into like dark blues. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even violets. Yes, uh, yeah, I should have brought my other pastels. Well, you're probably going to learn more working from the, the more yeah. limited selection. Yeah. Than, yeah. than if you, you had too many colors and you were just doing one-to-one -one color matching. So. Right. I mean, you could buy every pastel made, and you're still going to be short. You're, yeah. you're still going to be short half a dozen colors. <laughs> so, but there's some great peaches and yeah. pinks, and don't even be afraid to get into that <laughs> mercurochrome kind of fluorescent colors there, because there are places where that could work. We got a little bit of everything everywhere now. So this is good. This is good. Okay. Now, if you say, if you're to go the degree of lightness you want mm -hmm. here and white. I want yellow. Or, well, it, and white is just, you know, not colorful enough or it's too light. Mm -hmm. Take that a little darker, and whatever and what's there now will, by contrast, look lighter. Okay. So I mean, this is a big, very obscure area. So I mean, you could probably get in there with something like just this deep purple, okay. and plow it against that. Against that green. The the blue green there, because if you squint, they are roughly the same value. Mm -hmm. um, when you put two chalks together and you squint at them the lighter one will always stick out. 
And what you want to do when you're picking your gray or, or two colors are going to go together, you want them to disappear at the same rate. Excuse me, when you're squinting at them. Um, okay, so if it's too vivid, yeah. uh, but it's, you're generally in the right color, I mean, you've got the right value, yeah. then find the gray that is the same value as the, the purple and start walking it down. Yeah, this one's a little bit better, so it's more bluer. Okay. And then I'll put some gray. It's awful pale back there, that stuff. But yeah. And if you want to get like really fancy, let it be a little less gray here because this is actually okay. physically closer to us than that. So you might really lose it back here, but let a little of the purple show back here. So um, wa watch out here that you don't make that water line yeah. straight. It's actually like this and it really doesn't show. I would have liked to have had a greenish gray for that, but I didn't. <laughs> so I went to violet. Wow, Kathleen. What did I do? No, this is, this, I love this. This is so vivid. It's so vivid. And, but. No, 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 no. As long as you have your relationships, t one area to each other, right, the whole thing can be <coughs> more, well, look, with, I mean, we compare yours to, to Eileen's. She's much grayer colors, and you're more vivid, but both of you are, are keeping the value relationships pretty much where they need to be. Um, yeah, as you can see, she's even throwing in some green here, lime green, mm -hmm. and you don't really see. I don't have turquoise. Right, <laughs> so um, the thing is, if it's the value, there you go, you know? Yeah, no, that's, you, you, she's lucked out. She's got one that's just about bang on. So if you've got that, I and notice it gets that. notice it gets a little darker as it goes left, and it almost becomes the value of the trees there. Let's see if I can get you a. I, found, I just happened to come across that one today, and I wish I could find another. A clip. Yeah, a clip I've got one in here. Trying to see what we can rig up. Oops, geez, I'm sorry. There, can you see the whole oh, thing? Oh, perfect, yeah, thanks, great. Good. Yeah, we want to be able to see the whole, yep. That doesn't look like an enchilada, it looks more like a, Ch edge of an yeah, ch chili rellenos or something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, as you begin to get, you've got some color everywhere, and then you can look at the whole thing and you say, "Okay, what do I want to adjust? What do I want to make?" Oh. I think you're good there. Right now you've got this value and that value roughly the same and you s mm -hmm. notice that there's like a, a little bit of a shift from there to there to there and it does a very important thing. You might leave it darker back here 
because you can see that. So like right here, I need a lighter. Yeah, right there, it's actually this area. The two areas are nearly the same value. Um, but that shows out in front of that, and that shows out in front of that. So you'd not be able to make those judgments, except that you got this, this, and this in the ballpark. So, so you don't, yeah, there you go. And then you can, there you go. And then this guy wants to go a titch lighter. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't, you, to, make, to keep it from looking like sort of like little boy's teddy shirt blue, <laughs> um, if you can find something that's like a lighter complement to gray, did try a gray first. But that good. might, that may be. Yeah. And maybe just leave a titch of color somewhere. Okay. Uh, yeah. That, is this the same as that? Ooh, that's nice. Okay, so you do have a shift there. One's a little orangier, one's a little pinker. Mm -hmm. So that's a valuable pair. Yeah, that's much better. Now back in here, this is going to sound crazy, <laughs> but let's, see. let's smuggle a little bit of pink. That's a bit too dark. How about it's too vivid? Actually, I think this is the one I yes, yeah, the one I use. And then plow some gray into that. Okay. Because this is actually further away than that. But we want to get some, or they're in the knot, they're on two sides of the river, so we want some difference. Now that's too vivid. But if you plow the gray into that, yeah, and particularly lose it at that end and leave a little of the pink shown at this end where it's closer to us. It's nice. Okay. Now, to do this, these things, what do I just rub? We basically, fingers? I would get as much color on there as you possibly can. Okay. So eliminate all the light space. spots. Yeah, and you might, again, have to do the thing where you sort of plow the one color against the other. Okay. And you might say, okay, I've only got these two to work with. I'll use the green a little further back and the purple. A little, a little closer up, because um, we are going a, to a greener, gr mm -hmm. less distinct. Graduated. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Okay. The colors become a little bit more sticky to the front. Right? Yeah. too dark. It doesn't show. Yeah, that's that's probably going to be way too dark. So I would find yourself down in the ochres, these pale ochres, yeah, your, your pale orange. lemon yellow. Well, right and here? well, but yeah, watch kind of watch what happens with a like a sienna, a light sienna. Well, that might actually be, you know, right here where it's even a tad bit lighter. Right, right. And then come forward and then leave that. Right there, you might choose. Don't be afraid to use some of these siennas because they have a kind of a pinkish undertone okay. to them. Okay. Um, and you might even actually get into something that actually is pink, <laughs> okay. if need be. So um, right. it's the key thing is the value. But this, this is a nice separation going back there. And then probably that turquoise area down here. 
or that blue-green area, you'll want to come up a little bit darker there because as you squint, it's a little bit darker and almost merges here. Okay. Well, start over here so that we see it progress okay. from that to that to the lighter color as you go to the right. Good, good. Oh my, yeah. Okay, okay. Now, the area, I think we're looking good back here. Possibly this could lighten up just a bit. Mm -hmm. And I would try throwing a little bit mm. of this over top of it. Mm -hmm. And then as you go left, leave a little bit of what's there. So then we get a bit of space between that and that. Yeah, that did a contrail. Yeah. That pulled it. Then point. you may need to take some of this color right down into whatever you... What, this? Th these colors here, right down mm -hmm. into this, so that you notice there's a... Yeah, see how it gets... Mm -hmm. a little bit darker and virtually almost merges there. So we need a, a value that's quite close here and then gets a little bit lighter as we go to the right. And that's a lovely. Isn't it? That might be good for just above. So there's a minuscule value shift <laughs> mm -hmm. from left to right. I mean, this is tiny, tiny, tiny bit better. So as long as you get a little bit lighter over here where the sun is going to be, it'll give that effect. This yellow is probably going to be not that one. Probably this one. Oh, a lemon yellow. Okay. This one. Yeah, see, I think that's the lighter of the two. It almost sort of a progression from that to that. Um, don't be afraid to dive in. Oh, my goodness. Oh, in there again. That's too light. No. It was just a titch darker than that. Um, this is not a pure yellow, but uh, it's the color of the masking tape. <laughs> um, That's a good one. Oh. Yeah, it, yeah, it might be good for uh, as long as the value is right. And then as you get over here, it starts to get ever so slightly darker. Might be lightening that a bit too much. Yeah, I think so too. Because <laughs> it's isolating this one from it. It's a bit more of a gradual. Yeah, yeah I was crumb. thinking that that would be. Well, you get that one out. Yeah, the green, I guess, in there more. Well, if you if it's you can't get it blue green, go for a blue. Yeah, that's what I was doing, but I was the wrong green. one, I guess. So, I mean, <laughs> or plow, let's see. These two are about, I'd say the green's a little darker. Maybe this pair. Maybe I need to get these, this darker. Yeah, that yeah, definitely those. needs to go darker. Yeah, much, I much can, darker. Then I can kind of... You might find that, yeah, you might find you've got something that'll suffice for that. And also be mindful of the, the water graduates yeah. darker from right side to left side and almost becomes the value there. Yeah. 
Yeah, now that one, you probably are, you're in the ballpark, yeah. I think, on yeah. that one, because there is a slight value shift there. Yeah. Merges over here, comes up again there, um, but really, it, it's, it's, it's only at that one spot. Right. You know, they, they kind of, yeah, and then here, the whole thing gets lighter. So I think that your jump from, <coughs> uh, I think you're good there, I think you're good here, I think this one needs to get just a bit closer to that. To this? To that. Oh, okay, yeah, so later. Just a smidge, yeah. Mm -hmm. and then. Don't get it too close to that. You, wanna, <laughs> so. you might even have, I thought I saw one there that was. Yeah, that's just, I think, on its own. No, nah. oh, let's try. <coughs> oh, you got that one out. You know what? About like this. <laughs> well, just drag it down some. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, that's probably, I think, the. I mean, it's not the color, but it's the value. Yeah, <laughs> it's um, something. <laughs> well, that's that's it. We can we can't always get the color, but we can usually, almost always get the value. And then, then modify it so that it's as vivid or not vivid as we need it to be. If you've got a if you've got a short piece that you can lay it on sideways rather than using the edge like a pencil, yeah, yeah. that'll be a definite. Uh, yeah. Because a lot of times with pastel, it's you can create secondary and and values. Uh, by the amount of pressure you use with your hand, applying it. If you apply it hard, you get a deeper value. If you a little less, you get a lighter value. And that's kind of one of the ways you have to uh, suggest that kind of value shift. You can't mix it close like the oil painter can. So. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're good here. I think we just need to go a wee bit darker with the water here. Okay. Over here, I think we're all right. Probably. Um, that's too dark. Off. Let's get some of this kind of deeper cerulean color, and then plow it against that green. So when I squint, they're about the same mm -hmm. value. So you can kind of work these two okay. colors one against the other. All right. And then as you get over here, you're probably going to be about where you're at. Okay. Yeah, and then save those accents, the, the water lines there, kind of for the end. I want to get that big area value and then stick in the minor variations. It's a lot like building a house. Mm -hmm. um, foundation, framing, sheeting. Yeah, there you go. You don't you don't want to wire, wire and tile and paint the bathroom and then go <laughs> work on the next room. <laughs> there's, a lot of, there's a lot of power in just one color against another color. This. It's 
a little bit of it. Maybe, but we might be able to take it down. I'm looking, okay, here's the one. This pair are about the same value, but you can see one goes, yeah. they go in two distinctly different directions. So, did you, yeah, it looks like you might have used a bit of that there. You could probably use a bit of this here. And was this, yeah, that was the darker shade. And then right over here, we get the two sort of deeper versions of the same mm -hmm. components. And see, we're going to get a, just, before we do anything, we just want get, to get a nice transition of those okay, so two colors, yeah. These here. <coughs> Down. Yep. So you've got a dark pair and a lighter pair. So the darker pair over here, the lighter pair as you work to the right. And I think over here you're just about just where you want to be. So. Okay. Yeah, that, there we go. There we go. There we go. Good, good, good. Okay. So now I think the area to, to adjust is maybe right in here. It's gotten a little um, dirty. Yeah, so we want to pick out some peachy, pinky. Uh, just I would maybe even go over here and just look at everything you got in the right value range, whether it's what you're seeing here or not. Um, And then just get some good solid application of color on there because this color against the color against the color against the color really does a lot of the talking in an image like this. Let's get that straighter. Okay. Um, And this might be a likely candidate. That might be a likely candidate if you need an orangier version. Um, these. And then as you come forward, some little bit of green sneaks in there. That lime green really looks good in there. This, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we're not seeing it there. But <laughs> yeah, I, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, be sure you get this good and deep and dark. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. When you had that one and you just put that little bit of strength right there. I think it was this one <laughs> or maybe that one. Right, you were just right in there, yeah. And when you you bared down with the chalk, it made a lovely little light spot or solid color. So either one of those, I think, would would work. Yeah, that made it look kind of luminous. That was nice. Let's see how Terry's doing. Okay. Yeah. So we're we're in a different we're in a different hue range. Uh -huh, a little bit. Because we have to be. We can't mix. But we've got the the feel of this mm -hmm. is like the feel of that. Mm -hmm. Different colors, but the same feel. So th and that's a result of getting that basic value structure between those three yeah, areas I correct. I feel like I need to put like a little grayish to tone it down a little bit. 
Okay, so when you do that, remember there's gonna be more of it to the back than there is to the front. Right. So it might be that that's the two vivid things. So since there's very slim similarities of color there, yeah. if that is grayer, then yeah. this will then look. So, so that might be a bit dark. Okay, well I would select either that one or this one. Yeah, this one's kind of a bluish gray. Well, that's okay. okay. As long as it's going to take a little bit of the starch out. Yeah. Um, yeah, see, that's going back now. Yeah, now that makes it ritzy, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yeah, so. Okay. Yeah, that's, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because when you, when you have all your areas in and you feel like some of them are just a little too... Zippy. Yeah. <laughs> Back them down farther away first. <laughs> you, you don't want to take this down and then find out you have to go all the way to just pure gray. Yeah. Like... Um, that would make a little bit of color, color, yeah, a little bit of color coming through is always more pleasing than just the yeah, more fun. battleship gray. So, yes, 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 this is a coming along lovely. Now, I think, yeah, this is where we want to be um, inhale deeply. <laughs> <laughs> And work slow. Okay. Yeah. Um, now what do I do? You're on the home stretch. Okay. So, what do we, what, we're going to look at the two across one to the other. So right now, this looks a bit sawtooth. Mm -hmm. So I think we want to space those a bit more. Evenly. Irregularly. Oh, irregularly. Yeah, you know, it's, it's sort of like a couple wide space. Couple now, two, three. I think I need to make this bump bigger. Ah, a little bit, little. yeah. So the other thing I would do, make that a little bit bigger, and then the ups and downs in the back, mm -hmm. you might level them out, okay. just the, particularly this one, almost make it a, a straight line. Okay. This is one of those crazy things. When you're out there and you look here and you see all the ups and downs, the bumps of the trees, because they're there. Mm -hmm. Then when you look out here, your eye adjusts for the distance and the illumination and you see all the bumps up and down and then we start drawing them. But if you look at the, that line and that line together, this will always look much more level. Okay, you're right. It's, um, it looks almost straight. Yeah, almost a straight line, yeah. It's, but the thing when, you, when you're outside, uh, in the photo, it's fixed, but when you're outside, you have to look at two things together to get the difference of value, the difference of color, the difference of shape, irregular size, things like that. We always want to be relational and comparative because um, the eye, your eye is, it's, the problem is your eye is too good. Um, you further away you look, your eye just adjusts for that distance. And then you see, everything out there and we're interested in that whole scene so okay. but right at this place you're a very good place you can just slow down do the micro adjustments I think you're good. The only place I think that's starting to get a little bit away from us is that shift there. That's a big value <laughs> shift. And I think it needs to be a wee bit dark. Over here is right. I think we need to get some of the deeper blue greens in there. And it might involve plowing a blue and a green. <laughs> but yeah, there's, it's, there's some distinctness there, but not so much as here. So, and then once you've got that, uh, I think you can, beautiful colors up here, I think you can keep them as is. Beautiful colors here, I think you can keep them as is. And then just go after those little 
accents. Okay. Yeah. It's like those two, they're like a pair. They're they're like the dark and the <laughs> you know and the light <laughs> accent. So. That's gorgeous. That looks like, actually, I can almost see almost like fog there. You know, it's like how it's lighter here and then it gets a little darker there. That's great. So, I love that time of morning. Jeez. Yeah, what time was it? Oh, well, actually, it wasn't that early. It's probably more like seven. Oh, yeah. But it's November. Oh, right. Some dark time. <laughs> yeah. It's, oh, yeah, yeah, that's it, Kathleen. That's it. That's it. Okay. Now you're good. So now you can, now I think you can look for those little minor accents like that, mm -hmm. that thing. Um, See that thing? It's going to be pretty light. Um, it's going to be fairly similar to what you were using in here. So, and the main thing on it is the position. Where is it? And then... It's three quarters, sort of, in here. It needs to be lighter. Oh, I think you're a little too high. Yeah, I think we're going to need to be... Lower here? Let me get you one that's softer. It's kind of that color, but softer. Because we need to get a, a dense. Uh, see, this orangey one might be a little too dark. But the other pair, I've got a. Kind of the same oh, colors. they are nice and light, aren't they? Um, basically, the colors you've got here, but these are softer, so that you, when you put a dense mark on there, it'll it won't light up. So th yeah, that's not actually on the horizon. That's below the horizon. Thank you for putting that. Yeah, there you go. And there's a little haze coming up. And if you find that they're useful for making little dense accents yeah. over here too, go ahead and use those. What's that pretty color you got, that orange? Did well, that mix? coral color? Yeah. I didn't mix, it was actually a particular <laughs> But I don't know, it may, not, it may not be the right mix for what you've got. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, it's probably in the ballpark. I've got a couple other odd bods. Mix of that pinkish orange and pinkish orange. Okay, let's try these. One of those might work. Um, this one's, no, that one's kind of earthy. I still have to play with it. This is pinker. The key thing is you just need to get the value shift and not be using something like blue <laughs> or green um, because it's, we want something from the red, orange, yellow family. What did you use here? That's looking real good. Green. That, um... Ah, okay. Wait, maybe it was this. this. Yeah, my... Yeah, that's... 
uh, and maybe uh, maybe that ends some of this. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's a bit more. Yeah, we need a, and then let's plow some blue in there as well. Yeah, now here we're getting, I think maybe a little bit, we need a bit more of the, uh, A lot of times you can get a great reflection simply by pulling down <laughs> into it. Okay. You know, wipe off the lighter stuff mm -hmm. like that and just get this gorgeous soft edge. Load your finger with it, pull okay. it down. Yeah, and then bring a little bit of this the blue up around here. This peach. Uh, it's, it was probably this or what else has we got over there? Probably wasn't that. Well, I guess that's this. That looks like this. Mm -hmm. So maybe the next darker tone, which would be, yeah, probably this one. I just pull a wee, yeah. Pull it down. Notice there's like along the edge of this, there's the reflection of the mm -hmm. light goes mm -hmm. below it. So this then becomes somewhere over here. That then becomes the reflection of that. Okay. So yeah, because there's almost like a yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. go a titch lighter in there but lighter yeah I th I th it does I see a kind of a light yeah a little darker significantly darker a lot darker yeah. so oh my yes 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 okay Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, this is where you really want to move slow. And that's a surprisingly important line, that one there. Yeah, it's not dark enough, is it? Yeah. It kind of... Yeah, I think the, the what color you've picked up the first time, or maybe even this one, one of those two was probably the right one. Yeah. Bring it right across. It kind of is a connector mm -hmm. to stitch the one side of the page to the other so that it doesn't get sort of lopsided. So I think you, up there you're good. I think you're good up there. It was just that main, yeah, there you go. There you go. Just a few of those things, and might need a bit of, see, this is the end of the tree, so the reflection would come straight down from it. See, like where, it's almost like a flat line. It's a little bit lighter there, and then that dead tree comes out, or whatever, it's floating down river. So we don't want to tuck that under too much. We want to have a little bit of that, whatever that color is there. I don't think it's that one. I think it's, uh, hmm. It's a combination you can. It looks like it might have been like this. Hmm. Well, that's a round edge. We need a flat edge. so that we get the appearance of a reflection coming downhill from that. And oh, yeah, and then there's, 
that little bit of and that little bit of coming out there. So just I would just use it on the flat. Just pull it down. <coughs> this is nice because you've got one that's sort of darker and this one's a little lighter and cooler and then you top it off with that one. Yeah. Good, good. He's trying to cover up a line in a cave. Uh oh. <laughs> so, yeah. Where it belongs. <coughs> well, I guess it kind of looks like there might be some mountains in the background. But well, it is a, it, it's actually a big ridge. I mean, oh, Illinois right. goes uphill, but. Yeah. Um, Down here. Yeah, I think you could, yeah, you could, uh, let's see, what's in the... Yeah, definitely, there was one, this... That's a purple. Oops, yeah, well, I found one that was not so bluey blue, maybe this one? Nope, that's purple. It's got a little bit of violet in it. Yeah, it well, there's... Must be this one. That looks light. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I would keep it mainly over here. What you've got there is about where we need to be. Great. <laughs> Get, it. Get in there. <laughs> well, the, yeah, use that chalk on the side. Um, Distinct. Okay, do you remember? Yeah, do you remember it? Yeah, that looks. What was it? drawn down? I think you're okay. Yeah, just a wee bit lighter in there, but let's get some of. Just deepen the whole thing. Mm -hmm. There, and then get the... Look at that. There we go. This is a gorgeous. Yeah, see, just a little bit of contrast there. And then we lose it here because it does get lighter. And then, now, the thing that I would recommend at this point is your most distant horizon line. Um, there's kind of a, do you see like a bright hum there? Mm -hmm. Maybe if you just had like a, let's see if that's, yeah, I think that would be about, yeah, just try making a nice, uh, yeah, that's it. And let it, yeah, and then just mainly there. I mean, he, over here, it's, it's less distinct. Mm -hmm. There, that is kind of distinct. You can mm -hmm. see how that just kind of blurs. There, we're distinct. Good, good. Um, I can do a pale, paler yellow there. No, nah, I, would, I, would, I would live with what you yeah. have there. I think if we, if we make a distinct one side to the other, we'll snip it off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, whereas here, I mean, you can see it. Whereas you know, indistinct, distinct. So that's a. It's, it's looking good. Um, the only thing I would suggest is the colors you've got, where you've got them, 
maybe just pile more of it on. Mm. Particularly in the sky, we want a, a good, deep, smooth sky. Texture in here is, is desirable because it's trees and that kind of thing. Um, so sky is generally, in this instance, going to be the, the least textural item in the image. Maybe here, smooth, but down there we get some ripples in the water or whatever. So, yeah, just put a bunch of uh, the exact colors you've got there okay. and just plow them on. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> this is coming along. Okay, so now I would say just the only thing you need to add is a uh, little bit of need some. that darker, that little bit of shift of color here that's coming across. Mm -hmm. And I think it's probably, you notice there's a kind of a non-greenish blue in that. You might even find that whatever you were using, I think it was like here. Okay. Yeah, just kind of feather some of it on too dark, but what we do is just a light pressure, maybe as you come further left, a little more pressure, okay. you know, and, and on a slight diagonal there. Okay. This is looking good. Yeah, the, here she's done different colors, but you can see it just, it's, it's the, always we try to get that value first, if that's, if that's too dark, well, here, you got a line, but what you want to get is you want to get an area. So okay. light pressure. Oops. Okay, I get it. Let's get some of that lovely... That's the stuff, or is it? Mm. Can I get it? Yeah, one? that is. Okay, and then we can soften that edge. When you're riding across that. So you've actually, with the two, when you, when you drag them kind of, you almost get some little... Ripples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... So yeah, I just, it's a, it's a hard thing to communicate. You see me putting the color on, but like to tell you the pressure mm -hmm. that I'm using when I'm doing mm -hmm. it, that's a little bit trick here. Just get it where you need it and let's, I'd say, less of it over here. Mm -hmm. Some more of this stuff. <coughs> and then, gosh, uh, well maybe there's just a secondary smidge one coming in from there and then the now, is it this or this? <laughs> Even throwing a little bit of that on there, too. Mm -hmm. um, looking real good back here, particularly there. Um, that actually, you could, I think you could bring this almost up to here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. In fact, having been back in there. Now you can go in around. That thing is an island of it on its own. <laughs> so. Here, let's put that a bit off to the side so you don't have to hit it. So you've got the, the big shapes down, you've got the colors right, then the accents, there's, there's, I've deprived you of any kind of distinct thing you can draw. That was deliberate. Um, what you want to do now is take a look at the density of the color that you've applied. If your color's right, get a lot of it on there. 
um, particularly in the sky and the smoother parts of the water. A little bit of texture and, and, and bumpiness in the, the tree area, that's good. Um, it's where you'd expect it. But um, density of getting chalk on there is, is important with pastel. Don't want it to look too ghostly uh, where it needs to be uh, a solid physical kind of thing. Uh, unless it's a textured thing, like grass or trees or something. That's dense enough. I think you're looking good there, yeah. Okay. Maybe you could add just a bit more. Oh, right in here. Whatever you used. That little bright spot. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. So. Okay, Rosalind, here we've got, nice. this is nice. Yeah. This is nice. So now you want to look at both <coughs> the reference and the, and the painting and say, where do I want a distinct edge? Where do I want an indistinct edge? Yeah. I think okay. you're about, I think you're, I yeah, I think bit. maybe a little bit there. Yeah. Um, but I'd say you're darn near there. <laughs> Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, so now down there. Yeah, I think now you can, once you get the colors right, then you can blend or not blend as you, okay. you know, blend. See, see fit. <laughs> yeah, leave a little bit of that texture for okay. the, to indicate the water. Yeah. Um, subtle thing, small complaint. Mm -hmm. um, you might let that break up that line? Yeah, cut that. It's yeah. kind of the way that... Because it looks like a little valley almost. Yeah, um, and it does a nice thing. Whenever you've got a relentless straight line, it's nice to break it or soften it somewhere. Okay. Uh, just as a formal sure. kind of thing. And a little bit of steam or smoke or, you know, whatever excuse you can come up <laughs> with <laughs> to, to cause that. Um, that's a good thing, so... Yeah, I mean, here, um, this is actually a different kind of thing. This picture by Twachman. He's kind of doing the same thing with the, those yeah. little clouds. Yeah. They're just... Uh, it just breaks it up. It's a, who knows uh, whether he saw them there or not, but that was a great place to put them. <laughs> so you hit the I limit. I don't have that much on there. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've noticed with that. Stuff. I've noticed with that paper that yeah. some colors of it are are grittier than others. Oh, maybe, yeah. Uh, it's a strange thing, and I don't know if it's just because of the, whatever it is they mix in there to make that color. Yeah. But if you find you've gotten a little too far with it, if you've got, I've got a bristle brush over here. If you don't like the color you've got there, take a little bit of it out and then plow on the stuff that you do want. Yeah, it's grainy. It won't, it yeah. won't take anymore. Yeah, you've probably pretty... Although, I don't know, the thing is, you've... The color's right, the value's right. Um, the, grainy, the graininess <laughs> doesn't bug oh, me. Bug oh, okay. me. Yeah. As long as, this, as long as this appears a little bit more textural, yeah. And in this instance, it's drawn texture as opposed to physical texture. You're okay. I mean, this really has a nice, very early, cold, foggy morning feel. Mm. So. 
Yeah, it's almost like, um, it's like Kathleen's looks like about 45 seconds to a minute earlier than yours. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're just starting to. And see, that, that this, th yours is a little more distinct here than hers, mm -hmm. but that's correct to this earlier time. Oh, okay. You, you, would, oh. See, you would see less detail in here when it was a little, okay. the sun was a little lower. So the higher it gets, the more you're going to see. You know, another five, ten minutes, you're going to start to see the, Break. the l little edge where the flotsam and jetsam collects and Break. stuff. So nice, 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 nice. The the f feel the feel and the mood of the thing is the, is what we want to get overall. So I shouldn't touch it anymore, right? <laughs> um, well, yeah, you're at the stage where I see like you want to slow down and, and anything you do, you want to make sure it's you know keep looking at it, and if something continues to bug you, then you know that's where you need to work. Okay. So. And it's usually going to be an edge or value issue yep, it's at this right point. Here. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it right now. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, we could line these up and call it like a time thing. Yeah, there you go. So <laughs> it, it would go from I think Rosalind's to Terry's <laughs> to Kathleen's to yours. <laughs> Yeah, well, I get up later. <laughs> <laughs> Not an early riser, yeah. <laughs> so there we go. Yeah, let's do that. When we put them all together, let's line them up like it was a... What's that thing on the phone where it... Uh, live photo or whatever they call it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> So, Rosalind, you're the early riser. I guess so. You get up early, huh? It's because I live by a lake. I saw the morning and evening sun. Very nice. This is the turquoise side. Right. <laughs> so we put them up here? Uh, yeah. yeah it's but good. we want yours, too, don't we? Eventually, yeah. Uh, we'll leave some room for you. Oh, no. Let's, let's have these. Oh, yeah. Usually, if you get one in the middle. Okay, my fingers are so dirty, I'm afraid yeah. to. Right. And one here. Yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah. Now, see what we get. What you do as the light comes up, the contrasts. Uh, in certain areas become more distinct and none of, the, none of these would be at a time when we would start to see all the little detail at the water line. Um, but I, I, I like this time of day because it obscures some of those incidental details and keeps it from snipping the picture off. When when you have a hard line like that, these are this is you know a big, interesting shape. That uh, what a difference that made when when you leveled out that back. Mm -hmm. You know this now appears closer and that appears farther away. Um, it's a hard thing to get over. It took me years to figure out what I was messing up with. <laughs> but you have to look at the, the what's close and what's far away at the same time so you can see the. Uh, uh, yeah, you can see here he's that's some variation, but this is much more. Light, and of course, da -da 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 -da. so you feel it that it's closer. On yeah. The side Plus, he's yeah. also he's done it with the value as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a shift. Very, very limited palette in that. I think there's probably like maybe three, four colors tops. Yeah. Um, but a lot of power. And um, really, probably by the end of the 
when you were working here, if you got all the chalks in your hand that you actually used for your final choices, it was probably like less than a dozen, um, maybe even closer to eight to 10. Um, and just the power of the colors, just interesting shapes, pleasing colors, hitting against each other. There's, there's a lot of power in that. And it's really nice to look at. Um, I like the green in that one. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, that it's... And then, and then I like the, the difference in, in this one and that one, you know. There seem to be more, um, more difference between the two islands or whatever. Mm -hmm. Really get a nice sense of the glare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of, of yeah. The, you know, here too. Yeah. Um, ooh, yeah. Um, if you squint, those two yellows are nearly the same, but this is a much more vivid yeah. uh, yellow, and that's a less vivid yellow. So that gives you some, too. It's happening here too. She's got a kind of a pale straw yellow, and then there's that richer yellow heading over to the orange, so you get a little bit of the glow there. Um, it's happening here a little bit further to the left. You've got kind of a dull orange and a more zippier terracotta kind of orange, so you get some hum on the horizon, and that's a nice thing to have happen. Yeah, it has a nice feeling. Too. Yeah. And I think everybody did a pretty darn good job getting the relationship between the sky and the water, those two value ranges. Nice, it looks good. Oh, this one's yours? The yeah, one? on, oh, the, okay. on the purple paper, yeah. See, that's a good thing. Yes. You can't tell a difference, see? We're all the <laughs> 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 well, what I like is I really like the turquoise you put in there, so I think I'm going to put a little bit more turquoise there, too. As so long as you don't lose your value structure, you'll yeah. be all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's that, yeah. that the, the value structure over everything else. If, if that weren't true, we couldn't um, make sense out of a black and white photograph. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm looking at mine, I'm thinking there's a little too much contrast there. I would like less contrast. Because see how over here yeah. is that, yeah. that indistinctness? It's smoky, you know, yeah, it just foggy. really get a sense of the distance yeah. there. There and there too. Nice job, nice job. The bottom right there, the, there's a slight diagonal in the blending on the sky going upwards to the right, and then that straight up and down blending on the water there. Yeah. Um, that's a really nice effect. Uh, a little bit of, um, Notice how we have a kind of a distinct edge here, indistinct edge there. That's important. Very distinct, indistinct. Um, yeah, indistinct, distinct. So that's good. All right, I'm happy with the results. <laughs>